So with these examples, I do want you to go word for word writing as I'm writing. If you're just gonna play it and listen to it, your mind's gonna drift and you're gonna think of something else, which is understandable. I promise you that's gonna help. Eight mark evaluate question example two. So we know our structure on the one hand, two points there, on the other hand, two points there, overall, conclusion, judgment. Now let's try it out with this question, which is quite tricky and I'm going to add a bit more information here um, in terms of the content. And I want you to maybe, or we'll look at it in class or look at it in a video in another time, maybe try and figure out what I could take out of this answer uh, to make it more succinct, to make it more streamlined. Um, maybe where do I go off and talk a bit more about things which the question doesn't ask me for? Because let's look at the question in detail then. The question, evaluate the impact of globalization, countries becoming more connected through, let's say, TNCs, yeah, uh, transnational corporation companies. Um, evaluate the impact of globalization on the economy on the economy only. It's very easy to go off and start talking about the impact of globalization on society, on uh, healthcare, on slums, on so many things. Um, but it specifically asks you to evaluate the impact of globalization on the economy. So let's see if we can stick to that. Now our emerging country is India and I'm going to think, okay, globalization. So TNCs, these transnational companies have come to India and they've created a lot of jobs. That's the clear, clear um, positive. Formal jobs, in fact. So formal jobs um, allow or encourage or make people pay tax. Tax revenue go to the country. The country can then grow uh, in terms of infrastructure. So healthcare and education improved. But the question is not asking me for that. It's just asking me the impact on the economy. So formal jobs increase. The economy looks better in terms of statistics. Um, what else is there? Globalization. Um, people's skill set improves. Therefore, in the long term, the economy is going to benefit from the uh, citizens improving their skill sets brought from TNCs um, and other foreign experts. On the other hand, um, globalization, how has it been negative for India's economy? Well, we could talk about TNCs taking advantage of India's tax policies and they don't pay as much tax as what they would in other countries or maybe as what local companies do. So that's not positive, a positive impact for the economy. You could also talk about things like um, as people grow and develop um, because the economy has become better in India, they start leaving India and they start moving to other countries where wages are better. So the improvement of the economy has actually driven lots of people out of India. Um, so they gain the skills and now they leave. Um, so that's a negative. So let's see how this unfolds in. So on the one hand, globalization has had a positive impact on India's economy by increasing the number of formal jobs available. This has then increased tax revenue and raises GDP. Overall, it does improve India's economic statistics. More people are employed and the country is producing more wealth. The main reason TNCs prefer to establish their business in India is because of the English language and ICT skills of the population. And alongside this, the average wage is low, which is good for businesses. Likewise, another positive impact on the economy is as a result of globalization and TNCs bringing many skills and expertise to India, these skills will have a positive long-term impact on the economy as India can become self-sufficient and save money on employing foreign experts. Okay, so good things is that statistics numbers look better because more formal jobs are available, more people are paying tax. I've added in there why TNCs go to India, although the question doesn't really ask me, so that's something I should maybe reconsider. Um, uh, another positive impact 
as a result of TNCs bringing skills and expertise to England is that in the long term, these um, will impact the economy as India can become more self-sufficient and save money on employing foreign experts because now they've gained their skills. So on the other hand, what have we got? TNCs can take advantage of tax breaks in India and end up not paying into the economy as other companies, as much as other companies. This can have a, some negative impacts on the economy. Likewise, TNCs are not a long-term fix for the economy and they are likely to move to another country when it becomes financially beneficial. In addition to this, the impact of TNCs in the city can create a national divide or some disparity within the country. For example, Mumbai receives more financial attention from the government than other parts of Maharashtra. This can result in financial, educational and healthcare inequalities. So, mainly what I'm saying here is that TNCs are not a long-term fix for the economy. Um, and then we talk about the divide that it creates in the country. And then I do start to add in here financial education and healthcare inequalities. So that's not really sticking to the question. Again, that part, something to look at. Okay, another negative impact on the economy in India is the loss of many qualified professionals to more developed countries. Globalization has made it easy for these people to leave to leave their home and country and seek work in a more developed country. This has negative consequences on India's economy as it reduces the number of highly skilled professionals in India and therefore less highly paid work is carried out in India. So my second point here of why the impact of globalization is negative on the economy is that many qualified people are actually leaving India um, and going to more developed nations because of globalization, yeah? because it's easier to go to these countries now. Connections easier, easier information sharing is easier. Um, globalization, don't forget, is the um, process of countries becoming more connected, okay? Countries becoming more connected many benefits but also that means lots of people are leaving these poor countries so who's left who's going to benefit the economy there okay overall then let's see overall despite employing many people and bringing skills into india i believe globalization has had a negative impact on india because many highly qualified professionals are leaving india to work abroad and although some cities have benefited financially from TNCs, it has also created disparities within the country. Therefore, I would argue that globalization will have more negative impacts on the economy of India in the long term. So I've repeated a number of times, I would argue I believe, yeah, you've got to be clear when it comes to your position. That's what they want to see. And I haven't added anything new. I've just reiterated the points that I've put above um, and I've just put them uh, in a kind of like a list of why I held that position. Now, to be honest with you, it's the opposing position is probably easier to say that globalization has benefited India's economy because there's more jobs now. Yep, there's more wealth in the country. There's more skills in the country. Um, more people uh, now have jobs, essentially. However, I've chosen the opposite and it doesn't matter which side you choose as long as you argue it with evidence and a strong case. Okay, so that's your evaluate eight mark question, example number two.